as South Africa prepares to host the BRICS summit next month, the ANC says the bloc is playing a significant role in the global economy. It says many countries have been benefiting from the bloc in terms of trade and investment. The governing party is hosting the BRICS political party's forum colloquium in Sant and north of Johannesburg as a build-up to the BRICS summit. BRICS consists of emerging economies like Brazil, Russia, India, China and South Africa. The ANC is hosting a dinner ahead of the BRICS political party's summit. Let's speak now to SABC News International Editor also Sophie Mukwena, who's at the Santon Convention Centre. Oh, Sophie, thank you so much for your time this evening. There seems to be a huge interest in this summit. Why? Well, indeed, we are here at the Santon Convention Centre. It started earlier this morning with uh, the ANC Treasurer General, Dr. Gwen Ramokopa, uh, having an event where many people who came here were discussing the coming BRICS Summit. We know that uh, it is uh, a government event uh, next month. Uh, the ANC has decided that ahead of this important BRICS summit in South Africa, they must interact with the light-minded parties, but also with other political parties around the world, those that uh, the governing party has a relationship with. And also, we know that uh, this is the first time this is happening. But as you pointed out, today it was a busy day, and the uh, latest news uh, in relation to the former South African Deputy President uh, Jacob Zuma, that judgment from the Constitutional Court. What I do know is that uh, last week the former Deputy President and the former President of South Africa uh, was in Zimbabwe at Vic Falls, Victoria Falls, where he attended uh, a conference where he spoke to delegates at that conference. And I also got information that uh, he was expected to go to uh, Belarus next week and later uh, to Russia and of course to China. But I'm told by my sources that uh, he has left the country. He left yesterday. As we speak, he's on his way to uh, Russia, Belarus, and later he is going to go to China. But fortunately, uh, we have some Kela who often cover the political stories. Let's talk to him and find out what has been the reaction in relation to this court judgment or the constitutional court judgment, but also maybe to confirm the information I have that uh, as we speak, the former president, Jacob Zuma, is out of the country. Some Kela. Where is former President Jacob Zuma? Am I correct to say he's out of the country? Indeed, also if you are correct, former President Jacob Zuma has left the country. He did come back from Zimbabwe, came back to Pretoria for a little while, then jetted off to Russia. The former president is on his way to Russia as he speak. As we speak, he will be having some political engagements, some personal engagements as well in Russia, in Belarus. Then after that, he will certainly move on to go to China. But we can definitely confirm with you through our various sources that we have been working throughout the course of the afternoon and so and also with our colleague and I'm talking in KwaZulu Natal, that the former president has left the country. He is embarking on a trip to Rus to the Russian Federation. What a coincidence! You have the ANC, the governing party, his party, the party he once led. And he is still a member of the National Executive Committee, an ex-officio member, by virtue of being the former president of the ANC. And they are discussing BRICS. He is one of the founding fathers of BRICS, including the founding fathers of the Development Bank. What has been the reaction? What sense are you getting in terms of the reaction, particularly from ANC structures? What what does this mean for the ANC? The Zuma matter back on the table. It will definitely divide the National Executive Committee of the African National Congress. Just you look at people like Andy Le Lungisa, who has openly said that uh, former President Jacob Zuma's pain is his pain. History will, uh, will absolve former President Jacob Zuma. You've got his allies like Supra Muamapelo within the National Executive Committee of the ANC, Batabile, Damini, Toksankosa Zana, Damini, Zuma. You've got the likes of Thomas Bongani Pongo, Tony Yengeni outside the National Executive Committee. And also, You've got a structure in the form of KwaZulu-Natal, which has been 
which has had a rocky relationship with former President Jacob Zuma. It will be rather interesting on how the PEC, in particular the officials of the province, Sboniso Tuma, the provincial chair, Begim Tolo, the provincial secretary. In fact, I spoke to Sboniso Tuma on the phone. He was saying, some I can't comment at this point in time. Let us see how it pans out within the next few days. Then, if anything develops, we as a province will then come in and comment. But effectively, at this point in time, they are running away from commenting on this issue. It will be rather interesting on what President Ramaphosa, when he addresses this particular BRICS Galatina, will have to say about this particular matter, also knowing the close relations President Zuma has with President Lula de Silva, has with President Xi Jinping, has with President, um, uh, President Vladimir Putin of Russia. So it will be rather interesting on how the BRICS leaders and presidents react to this particular matter, and knowing very well that former President Jacob Zuma may not leave Russia without seeing President Vladimir Putin. Well, this reminds me during the former President Abombegi's recall, many countries that have relationship with uh, South Africa, with the ANC in particular on the continent and around the world, they were quite disturbed by the developments. And now you have another hurdle that President Ramaphosa must uh, kind of uh, jump in terms of how you deal with President, former President Jacob Zuma matter at a time where he is expected to host so many delegates from the continent and around the world, the five uh, leaders of uh, BRICS. The reality is also for the issue of former President Jacob Zuma is an Achilles heel, not only to President Ramaphosa, but to the National Executive Committee of the ANC, to the Provincial Executive Committee of the ANC in KwaZulu-Natal, and to the society and to African society at large, and also to the judges themselves who feel as if former President Jacob Zuma has stretched the limits of the constitution, stretched the limits of the constitutional court. You just look at uh, the last judgment by Sisi Khambempe, in the Constitutional Court, which are very scathing against former President Jacob Zuma on the matters relating to his non-appearance at, the, at the, the, the State Commission, the State Capital Commission of Inquiry. And you just look at that fictitious relationship that is there between the judges and former President Jacob Zuma, the judgments that have come out, how scathing former President Jacob is, how critical he is of the, of the Constitution and the judiciary within the Republic of South Africa. So it's going to be rather interesting on how the ANC navigates through these stormy times that they are facing and also knowing that the burning of trucks has once again resurfaced in the month that we commemorate the July insurrection that took place two years ago, one wonders what will be the political reaction on the ground now. Should law enforcement agencies and should the the Department of Correctional Services decide that former President Jacob Zuma must go back to incarceration and the time period that he must stay now in order to complete his sentence. A difficult one, but you are there as the political uh, journalist. I know that you'll be able to get us uh, information. I see an ANC NEC member, Mr. Alvin Portis. I'm going to try and grab him for you there. So okay. You can try and he was uh, co into the NEC. Let me bring him for you. Well, as you can hear that, yes, we are here covering the brick story, but uh, we cannot ignore big breaking story in relation to the former president of South Africa, Jacob Zuma. And as I pointed out, I was told last week that he was going to China on the 15th of July. But uh, now I'm told that he left yesterday. He is on his way to Russia, then Belarus. From Belarus, he will be going uh, to China. And as uh, Samgela pointed out, uh, he has a strong relationship with uh, uh, President Vladimir Putin and of late now uh, it looks like uh, he has strong ties with the president of Belarus and I think uh, this story will continue but uh, from where I am as I pointed out this is going to be a dinner by BRICS. Let's speak to the deputy minister. Uh, minister you are an NEC member. The issue of the former deputy president, I know you are caught of God, of the former president. Yeah. Uh, the judgment by the Concord. I know you were not ready for this, but we can't ignore this big story. Well, uh, Sophie, thank you very much. Uh, let's first indicate that we are at this current moment uh, engaging in the BRICS uh, Dialogue uh, Plus uh, uh, gala dinner. Uh, 
We have seen, like most of you, the outcome of the CC uh, decision on uh, former President Zuma. Um, and of course, there's a leadership collective led by President Ramaphosa that will attend to the particular details of the judgment. Uh, ultimately, uh, Sophie, the ANC is the leader of society. So the first issue, what is uh, unequivocal and what we must say is unambiguous, is that we subscribe obviously to the rule of law, uh, notwithstanding um, sometimes the pain that decisions of the judiciary uh, cause us as an organization and as individuals, but we, we are subordinate to the rule of law. But be it as it may, we think that in the broad repository at the disposal of uh, President Ramaphosa would be instruments uh, that he will be able to utilize to mitigate, obviously, um, uh, the impact, the effect of the type of uh, decision, uh, having hindsight to the fact that, uh, you know, former President uh, Zuma is what we can call uh, today of old age. So those are some of the aspects um, that the leadership will obviously consider. Um, but we have, I think, I think the ANC have, must have issued a decision that they have noted the decision. Um, and uh, there will be leadership provided. Let's turn to BRICS. Uh, we're counting weeks now. How ready are we as a country from the, the Department of International Relations and Cooperation? Well, uh, Sophie, uh, we, are, we are as ready as it can be. You have seen that as a precursor, um, as building blocks towards the actual BRICS heads uh, of state uh, and of government summit in August. There has been a plethora of uh, activities that has undertaken the BRICS Business Council, BRICS Academia Forum, the BRICS Women uh, Summit. Uh, in uh, what five days time we have the BRICS uh, Youth Summit. It will obviously be complemented by a perspective from the African National Congress who is convening the ANC BRICS uh, plus uh, political dialogue. So that will obviously shape a number of important uh, theoretical and political considerations on the expansion of BRICS, uh, the economic uh, consequences of being part of the BRICS formation. So we are as ready as we can be. The elephant in the room, the Russian Federation president, Vladimir Putin. When are we going to have an announcement from the president in terms of what is going to happen? We know that he has indicated the president that the summit is in South Africa. There's no turning back. It is in person. And therefore, when you say in person, you expect all leaders of this important group to come or descend to Johannesburg? Uh, yes, thank you very much, Sophie. Uh, I think elephant, if you translate it, means Nundlovo. Yes. The, the only matter as it relates to Nundlovo is whether BRICS as a multilateral organ of the Global South has been able to uh, fortify its stance within the global political, financial and economic architecture. So our submission from uh, uh, Durko is that our people must be seized with that, uh, what we call uh, important debate. Um, there is what you call sub subordinate matters around the attendance of uh, heads of states and of government to the summit. We, we thought that we have clarified that President Ramaphosa at the appropriate time will announce, but as we are speaking, uh, the five uh, uh, priority areas 
everyone assists with it and the thematic theme about BRICS and Africa, uh, what it means for the African continent, for the global south. So we are excited, we are elated that this is a convergence of, uh, you know, mind light uh, personalities of associations. We have both state and non-state actors here today, uh, Sophie, so we are interested to look at the actual outcome from the August summit. Thank you, Deputy Minister. That was the Deputy Minister of International Relations. Uh, I think uh, going forward, we will continue to cover these stories that are related to the much-talked-about BRICS summit.